Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze and author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. In this video, I'm going to share something I've wanted to do for quite some time. I've purchased an old C8 telescope off eBay, and in a minute, I'm gonna open it and see if it was worth it. But first, why buy a C8? Well, most amateur astronomers know that there is no one telescope designed for all purposes. Newtonians and fast refractors are great for wide field images of the sky. I love refractors for the contrast and as a forgiving beginner imaging scope. I like Newtonians and Dobsonians for the resolution, but I've always wanted the C8, which is the smith cassegrain design. The high focal ratio of this design gives you nice, tight, high resolution views. This makes telescopes like the C8 perfect for planets and relatively bright deep sky objects like globular clusters. The C8 is particularly good at imaging planets, even with a cell phone, and that's the main reason I'm interested in this scope. But why buy a used C8? Well, this is autumn of 2020, and we're still in the midst of a global pandemic. Well, except here in Nova Scotia, where we're only getting about one case per month, and that one person is in quarantine anyway. Well, the point is, Astronomy as a hobby has picked up astronomically. Telescope manufacturers are struggling to keep telescopes in stock, and as a result of simple supply and demand, and maybe a smidge of antitrust, the price of telescopes is skyrocketing. So again, I'm here in Canada, where a new Celestron C8 currently costs $1,399 plus 15% HST. That's our harmonized sales tax. So with tax and shipping, the total price comes to $1,634. For American friends, that's about 1,240 George Washingtons. Used, the Celestron C8 traditionally goes for around $300. More recently, it looks like used C8s are going for between $400 and $500. I picked this one up for $335, so hopefully it works out. Now, I say it's just $335, but of course, I'm in Canada, so eBay adds a customs fee. In my case, that was $66, plus an additional $69 for shipping, so in total, that's $470 US dollars, or about $620 Canadian. All said and done by going used, it appears that I've saved just over $1,000 Canadian, or just under $800 US. Of course, that assumes the telescope, well, works. The last time I ordered a used telescope, it was an 8-inch carbon fiber Newtonian by Explore Scientific. I started doing an unboxing video, but I discovered the secondary mirror was shattered and the parts were bouncing around inside the optical tube. Fortunately, Explore Scientific was awesome and sent me a new secondary mirror assembly at no additional cost. Okay, so let's open this up. Got my trusty Cutco scissors here. Okay, so it looks like, at least from the outside, it survived in one piece. Let's take a look at the optics here. Wow, look at that. Hopefully this is in as good a condition as it looks. Okay, so this is interesting. This C8 is slightly different than the others that I've seen. For one, it's gray, and most C8s are orange or black. It's also missing the handles that a lot of C8s have. Um, and the rear trim is also a bit different. Look at how it rolls into the back plate like this. It's also not Fast Star compatible. Fast Star is a replacement for the um, secondary mirror assembly that allows you to put in a lens called a Hyperstar, which allows you to image at F2. The telescope also came with Bob's knobs, which replaced the collimation screws, which at least in theory should make this easier to collimate and to align the mirrors. We've also got a Vixen dovetail that came with it because it will attach to a C8. There is some rust on the bolts, uh, which is probably just a matter of its age. Not all the bolts, surprisingly, just uh, a couple of them. Looks like there was a binder scope assembly here, or it's possible that this used to be connected to a wedge. So according to a website I found, this could have been originally paired with an early Nexstar mount. That would explain the lack of carrying handle and the position of the dovetail bar. So if it was this design, then the scope is from 2003, or about 17 years old. So as you can see, I didn't get this with a mount. What I'm gonna do is put it on a Celestron AVX mount that I purchased about six years ago, used for about $500. These days, I'm guessing most people that buy a CA new 
also get the mount, which adds about $1,000 to the price. But I mean, I think that mount is pretty swell and I use it for imaging without much issue. Because this telescope has fairly high of magnification and a high focal ratio, it's difficult to use without a computerized mount. And that's, I assume, why most of the time uh, this comes with the Nexstar computerized mount or on the Celestron AVX equatorial mount. So here we've got the Celestron C8 on the Celestron AVX mount. Now, as you can see, the telescope did not come with a visual back, so I had to purchase one of those separately. Visual back is just something for an eyepiece or a diagonal to screw into. They look like this, they're about 20 bucks, and it will just screw into the back like this. Okay. So the diagonal I'm using came off um, my Explore Scientific 102 refractor. And this is just a simple nine degree. It is a two inch diagonal, and here's a one and a quarter inch adapter as well for the smaller eyepieces. Hammering. So the diagonal should just screw in to the visual back, like so. And then we can add our eyepiece, like this big one. Now I see most C8s being used with only one and a quarter inch eyepiece. I'm hoping the two inch eyepiece with a wide field of view still does the trick but I guess we'll find out. So the telescope also didn't come with a finder scope. I know when you buy them new, they usually do. I usually replace those with a Telrad anyway, or a Rigel Quick Finder. Um, but in this case, I've pulled the little finder scope off the C90. I've got a Celestron generic um, finder scope mount right here. I'm gonna see if that fits in. It looks like it's held in with just two Robinson screws. Let's see if it fits. Okay, a little bit of drama. Oh, I see what's happening. So the finder scope is running into the screws right here. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can get it to focus on some trees way over there with the two inch eyepiece. Got some very clear views of a tree that is quite far away. So the most important step in setting up a telescope is making sure that the finder and the scope are pointed at exactly the same direction. And I found that that can be a lot easier during the day. So I've got that now, uh, the scope and the finder scope pointed at a distant chimney. And you can see that the chimney is moving. Um, that's because the mount is tracking. So be wary of that as well. So here we have the telescope uh, with a Celestron XYZ um, iPhone mount. And here we have our first light from this C8 and it is focused on the moon. And here we have right here, this is the straight wall. And that, this means that this is about lunar day eight uh, and just incredible resolution here on the moon. Let's see if I can zoom in. Sometimes it, the phone likes to switch cameras, um, but there you have it, wow telescope is picking up Saturn fairly easily in this uh again it's just at sunset here and look at that not a problem check it out here's it what do you see in there buddy I can even see the wings of the Saturn Saturn yeah is that cool yeah it's super cool do you like the new telescope yeah should we keep it we should. Excellent. I agree. You can see? I could see it so well. I could see the Saturn so well. And one thing everyone wants to know about every telescope is how well does it take pictures? So what I've done here with the C8 is I've put it on an uh, equatorial mount and I'm gonna show you what tools I'm using to take a basic astrophoto with this telescope to see just how it does. So we've got the C8 mounted on a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. We've got a designated astrophotography camera on there, and that is a ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro with a 0.8 field flattener and a simple auto guider, which is another ASI camera. And that's just a generic 50 millimeter uh, guide scope there. And I'm using an ASI Air, which is taking the data from the camera and shooting it over to the cell phone. And I have taped with painter's tape, because I couldn't find my double-sided tape, a Rigel Quick Finder um, to 
the telescope just to help it get aligned. So if we look at the screen, we just got our first exposure back. And here is just a single uh, image of M42. Now this is stacked with bias and flat frames, no darks, but you can actually see that the stars are pretty pinpointy. I didn't use the focuser mask on this. Um, oh, there's a picture from my other telescope, <laughs> my work telescope. That one turned out not too bad. Um, yeah, there you have it. So you can image with this scope. It's not an Edge HD, but you know, that's not bad. I would not hesitate to use uh, this telescope for other images. I might test it on some galaxies and see how it does. Um, but for this purpose, it, it worked. So you might have to go up, so make sure we don't touch oh, it. Oh wow, hey, don't touch it guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see it behind up here. I should have brought a... Yeah, so here's Saturn and there's Jupiter. Now if we want to see those Saturn's rings a little bit better, I'm just going to turn down the brightness here. That's awesome. Yeah, so there's, oh, cool. there's Saturn. And can we can zoom in on it if I concentrate. How look you mean? So I'm just going to move oh, the telescope so here. Cool. So, and then we zoom in on Saturn's rings right there. Oh, 